Hello friends, my name is Real Emil and welcome to some more Reach the Peak, the show where you guys recommend the cars and then I take them up our challenging hill climb course to see what can set the best time. If you're watching this on the day it's uploaded, then happy Christmas. If you're not, then well, happy whatever day it is. Let's get on to it with the cars of today and I figured in the light of festive spirit, each of these cars have a little festive paint job on them, so that's about as good a Christmas special as you're going to get from me. Anyways, uh, first car is a 1973 Reliant Supervan 3, 32 horsepower, 38 foot-pound of torque, and a 1,006 pounds of weight. I should point out that this car weighs two pounds more than it should, uh, because I had to add that little roof box thing onto it because it's kind of funny to me. And yeah, it's on there. It increases PI for some reason by one, and it also ups the weight. So I don't really know what it's doing I it won't make that much of a difference uh, really anyways uh, the Reliant Supervan well let's let's get the elephant out the room first it is predictably slow this thing has 32 horsepower um, it is currently although it won't be by the end of this episode but it is currently the least powerful car to ever hit uh, the hill and in fact I'm fairly certain this is one of the more least powerful cars in the game uh, I think it's the third because the above 595 has slightly less power than this, I believe. But, anyways. Uh, yeah, so the Supervan, while it may be slow, um, and you'd think it might fall over, it's actually not as bad as you'd think to drive. Uh, it's surprisingly decent, actually. Uh, once you figure out how to stop this thing rolling, which essentially, uh, I'm not sure if it's actually like this in the base game, sort of when you're just driving on normal... Uh, roads, but at least up here in the hill climb, I found a way to prevent it from rolling. Simple, just don't full throttle it through the corners. Half throttle, and it won't fall over. It sounds strange, but yeah, that prevented it from falling over. Of course, at full throttle, it will fall over. Um, but yeah, if you just half throttle it, it doesn't really fall over, which is quite amazing. Uh, so yeah, there is genuinely a way to drive this vehicle sensibly, and once you do, yeah, it isn't a terrible handling vehicle, certainly. I mean, it's... Yeah, the 32 horsepower, it's not going to do much. Also, I forgot to mention this car is a D-Class car, 174 MPI, when it is equipped with the snow tyres. Now, I do have a bit of an oopsie coming through this corner. Yep, it does fall over. This wasn't the actual uh, lap that was the quickest, by the way. The second run was the quickest, but uh, I'm using the footage from the third run. Uh, because the third run was the slightly better looking of the two, so, yeah. Anyways, yeah, Superman, uh, decent enough, I guess. Uh, a lot better, a lot, lot better than I was expecting. I was expecting this thing to be a huge handful. I was expecting it to be falling over. In fact, to be honest with you, I was half expecting it to not even be able to get up the hill. I was expecting it to have issues uh, when it came to actually genuinely climbing the hill, but... It didn't. It, you know, it persevered. It carried on, and yeah, I, I'm surprising. That's the, about the best way I can sum this vehicle up. I wouldn't want to drive it with the motorbike engine swap. Uh, I know you can do that to this vehicle. Wouldn't recommend it. Uh, certainly wouldn't recommend it at all. But uh, you know, it's there if you want to do it. You can't really do much with the Reliant. It is very much a gimmick vehicle. Um, but overall yeah from stock it isn't terribly awful I guess if you're a little bit careful with it anyways next up another car which I didn't think would particularly do well when it came to getting up hills on this track this is the 1957 BMW ice setter 13 horsepower 14 foot pound of torque 920 pounds of weight this is the least powerful vehicle here today, the least torquey vehicle here today, and the lightest vehicle here today. It is also the lowest in PI. It is a D-Class car with 100 PI exactly when equipped with the snow tyres. Now, what that actually means is this car technically isn't D-Class 100. It'll actually be below that, but the game can only register cars up to 100 PI. So, the actual PI of this thing is probably in the 70s, I'd imagine. Um, best way to describe this car, it's slow as old buggery. It's painfully slow uh, driving this thing up here. Admittedly, the has got snappy handling, but then again, you'd expect that if you've got 13 horsepower. And the best speed you can get around here is about 50 on the very long straight and about 30 through pretty much every other corner. 
you can see as it goes uphill, uh, similar to the Gurkha, it does lose speed. Uh, between this and the Gurkha, I would actually be kind of... I mean, this is the slower of the two, but between the Reliant and the Gurkha, I'd actually be interested to see which one of those uh, could win a drag race up a hill. Um, because, I mean, the Reliant manages to climb hills about as good as the Gurkha did, to be honest with you. In fact, I think it might be even a bit better than the Gurkha. Uh, the, to be fair, this might be a l It's not as good as the Gurkha, you know, It's uh, but it's only slightly worse. It's not by much, and the Gurkha has an extra, what, 646 torque on this thing? So, yeah, I mean, admittedly, the Gurkha does weigh about 16 times what this does, but that kind of muddies the point, so we'll ignore that. Anyways, to essentially get this thing... To go up the hill, it's a case of really you need to manage your gears. If you're in the wrong gear at the wrong time in this vehicle, you're going to probably start rolling backwards. You will see me. I've figured out sort of the change points on this car. So around, I believe it's 29 miles per hour second gear uh, tops out at. So you'll see me switching between second and third a lot. Basically redlining this car in second gear just to keep it going. Because as soon as you change into third, look, you'll just lose all the speed. If you change it in second, it will start gaining speed again. Uh, so yeah, uh, another interesting thing about this vehicle, you might be seeing it a bit there. Uh, the rear suspension does knock awfully on this vehicle. It really bounces up and down. Now, as far as actually affecting the handling characteristics, it doesn't seem to do much. It's just pretty darn disorientating uh, when it's doing that because, you know, you're just driving along and then all of a sudden the car will just start bouncing up and down. Uh, which isn't particularly a good thing, uh, shall we say. Uh, yeah, you might see me drop it down a gear. Yep, there you go. Just manage your gears with the eye setter and you can get it up the hill. Uh, if you can't manage gears, you probably don't want to do it. I have no idea what this thing would be like on the auto gearbox. I'm assuming the auto gearbox might be able to cope with it, but uh, you really need to use manual so you can actually keep this thing in the red lines for as long as you can. Uh, because the auto will just change it as soon as you hit it, essentially. Uh, which you certainly do not want uh, when you're driving this thing. Anyway, mercifully, we are at the ice patch straight, which of course, well, this can avoid all of the ice patches on the ice patch straight because it's not going fast enough to for the handling to be an issue. Um, yep, yeah, just one final little hill for the ice setter to climb and it's probably the steepest one on here. That's the one cars usually lose speed at, um, that hill right there. We should really think of a name for some of these corners, shouldn't we? But uh, I'll probably leave that up to you guys if you want to name some of these, I guess. Um, completely not stealing that idea from Fail Race at all. Anyways, um, as we go through the last checkpoint, we are almost done. 3, 2, 1, across the line for the ice setter. God, that took a while. Anyways, uh, I figured we'd round out the um, three wheels of madness, although technically the ice setter has four, but shut up. This is the 2014 Morgan three-wheeler. It has 82 horsepower, 103 foot-pound of torque, and weighs 1,200 pounds. It is a C-Class vehicle, 555. In PI once equipped with the snow tires. Uh, so, of course, this is the quicker of the three wheelers, obviously. Uh, has the most power, most torque, weighs the most, etc. etc. Um, the three wheeler honestly struggled up this course um, pretty badly, if I'm being all. It, yeah, just wasn't a particularly good vehicle to drive up here. The crucially big issue with this vehicle is twitchiness. This thing is very, very twitchy, which I kind of maybe was expecting from this thing because it has a single rear wheel. Um, but yeah, and because it's so light as well, it just twitches uh, pretty violently. When it goes sideways, it feels like it's just going to twitch off and try and kill you, essentially, uh, which you don't really want from a vehicle, admittedly, especially on a tricky course such as this. Yeah, it was twitching all over the place. On top of that, it's not even that particularly quick. It's quite slow. Uh, 93 horsepower, I mean, compared to everything else here so far, it's basically a supercar, but, uh, you know, in terms of actual just normal vehicles, it is quite slow. It is just, it struggled. It really did struggle. It wasn't a great car to drive up here. Uh, I have driven much better vehicles up here. 
and I will proceed to drive much better vehicles up here. Is it the worst to go around? It's certainly one of the more tricky I've had to deal with. Probably one of the more disappointing as well, because I actually wasn't expecting this one to be that bad. I was expecting the handling to be a little bit better than it is, but uh, those skinny front tyres probably hurt it quite a bit. Yeah, honestly it doesn't feel like a C-Class car going up this course. It feels kind of more like a D-Class car. Uh, almost, and it probably should be, to be fair. Um, as far as what you can do with the freewheeler, I don't really know. Again, I kind of like the Reliant and, I guess, the Isetta as well. It does seem like a bit more of a gimmicky car where they're really... You can't do much with it in terms of building it into an actual racing machine. I probably wouldn't. Uh, there are much better base cars to go with, but if you want something weird and wacky, I guess the freewheeler out of the Isetta and the Supervan and this is probably the best one to go for. Uh, but yeah, just don't take it snow driving stock. It just isn't particularly good, uh, if I'm being perfectly honest. Anyways, across the line for the freewheeler. Next up, we move to, uh, admittedly, a very silly car, but not quite as silly as those that have previously gone round in this episode. This is the 1966 Ford F100 Trophy Truck. It has 850 horsepower, 690 foot-pound of torque, and weighs 5,200 pounds. It is the most powerful vehicle here today, the most torquiest vehicle here today, the heaviest vehicle here today, and the highest PI vehicle here today at A789, which it is standard because you don't have to equip snow tires to this because it comes with them from stock. Anyways, uh, the F100 Trophy Truck. This vehicle is notoriously known for being a, a pretty tricky bugger to drive. Um, people don't particularly like this vehicle. Um, it came, of course, with the Blizzard Mountain DLC. Um, but people just do not like the way this thing handles. I can definitely understand why, but I will say it's not awful uh, up here. I was expecting. I have driven this thing before. I drove it for a cross country race, I think, and I, I, from what I remember, it was bloody awful. Um, but, you know, driving up here now uh, and actually having some time to play around with it, I have to say it's not an awful vehicle to drive. It is extremely tricky. Do not get me wrong there. It is a very tricky car to drive. It's very easy to just oversteer it uh, off into a wall or oversteer it into a spin. Uh, you know, you have to be extremely careful with this car. It has long gears as well, which isn't particularly good, uh, which essentially means you uh, need to make sure you're in the right gear. First gear will actually stretch to about 70 miles per hour. Uh, so I had to keep remembering myself, uh, reminding myself, although it's, you know, sticking over about 7,000 RPM, there's still plenty of this gear to go, the truck's just finding traction. I will say, once this thing found traction, though, it was extremely quick. You're seeing it right now. This thing is super quick once it has found traction. 850 horsepower, obviously, is an awful, awful lot, especially to push through a truck chassis such as this. Um, yeah, the trophy truck... Um, there have been much better vehicles to drive this course, but, you know, go drive it around, like, not a cross-country course, uh, one where you'll actually have time to sort of care about your throttle positioning and whatnot, and, yeah, it's not a bad vehicle. Anyways, we finished today, well, I decided because, well, this is the Christmas special of sorts, uh, I would actually go ahead and put the uh, Christmas car for the Gables. This is a Holden Tarana, 216 horsepower, 295 foot pound at all, 2,520 pounds of weight. B class car, 659 in PI. This particular version, this livery is the VIP version. Uh, the standard version is a, you know, normal green and red, but this one is sort of like a black and blue with some silver in it. Uh, kind of like the Forza Racing Championship cars. And I really kind of like this livery, so I thought, sod it, I'll uh, I'll put this on it. Anyways, uh, the Tirana was pretty decent. Out of all the vehicles here today, this is the most sane of the bunch. Again, the only reason it's really here is because it was the Christmas gift, so I guess some people might be interested to see how it copes in the snow, considering it's the Christmas gift. Um, yeah, it's the most sane vehicle here today. It's a muscle car, essentially, but uh, the one thing I was interested in um, with the Tirana is the fact that this, while this may be a muscle car, you know, the power figures aren't that amazing. 216 horsepower isn't an awful, awful lot. It's not like the Cuda, which had 425 horsepower and really struggled because it struggled to put all that power down. 
Uh, the Toronto I was thinking might have a better bet of sticking its power down, and well, it did. It's decent. Uh, it's actually, I've been comparing quite a few vehicles uh, to this particular car, but uh, you know, it's worth doing again. The A86. Um, the Toronto did kind of remind me of that. Basically, this is an A86 driving up here, which has about a hundred more horsepower and weighs a little bit more, and if I'm honest with you, the A86 is probably the better of the two vehicles. This thing feels really kind of heavy, which is strange because it only weighs 2,500 pounds, uh, but up here it did feel kind of heavy. And that, you know, extra 100 horsepower, that extra, I think it's got like three times more torque than the A86, just really goes to waste because it's just basically making it harder to put the uh, power down, which is a bit of a shame, so... The Toronto, decent vehicle, certainly you can do quite a bit with the Toronto once you tune it up and so on, it can be a pretty decent vehicle, or pretty mad vehicle, depending on what you want. Uh, but I was going to say, for driving up a hill climb course such as this, the A86 would probably be the car I'd choose, as much as I'm not a huge fan of the A86 and I do kind of like the Toronto, yeah, the A86 was probably the better vehicle of the two up here. Anyways, going on to the leaderboard for today, and the Ford F100 is the quickest car of today, going into 12th with a 221.275, which is a lot quicker than I was expecting it to. In fact, um, between the second run and this run, there, there was a, a five second difference, so the trophy truck only just managed to get there. It does beat the Aston Martin Vulcan, which is pretty amazing when you consider it. Uh, the rest of the cars find themselves down here on the board. The Tirana goes into 19th for a 232.086. Misses out on that Thruno by about half a second. Yeah, the A86 was just a better vehicle up this course, unfortunately. Uh, 21st place goes to the Morgan Freewheeler with a 244.932. Um, four seconds behind the Cadet. Definitely deserved the Freewheeler, wasn't great. Uh, it was quicker than the Myers Manx, but the Manx, you've got to remember... While that was a C-Class car, it starts as a D-Class car, so, yeah. Uh, the Supervan does not do particularly awful at all. It actually beats the Gurkha, uh, believe it or not, which is pretty darn insane. Uh, 322.169 for the Supervan. And the Isetta, unsurprisingly, is the slowest car of today, and the slowest car we'll probably ever have around here. Going to 25th place with a 4 minutes 18.826. I don't see anything being slower than that I set it. It was just hilariously slow, that vehicle. Um, it tried, but I wasn't expecting majorly good things out of that vehicle anyways. Anyways, friends, and that is it for this episode. As always, if you have cars you'd like to see go round the hill climb course, leave them down below in the comment section, and I will add them to my list, and they will go around at some point. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching, friends. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.